Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to dissect mechanisms responsible for plastic deformation. We have two main ones that are twinning and slip. And before getting into the content, I want you to take a look at this slide of twinning and slip, which are two main mechanisms of plastic deformation. And I want you to remember these images and kind of recall them whenever you hear about plastic deformation especially in metals, because these two are kind of analogies for what is happening within metals. So whenever you're thinking, thinking about plastic deformation, you're thinking about twinning and slip, and these images can help you whenever that this topic is discussed to bring them as two main concepts so you'll be able to um, uh, analyze uh, plastic deformation uh, in materials. So um, as discussed before, um, when we talk about plastic deformation, we are uh, we mean that we are beyond the elastic deformation, just beginning of the plastic deformation, which is permanent deformation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can uh, check our other videos link here and also in the description. Uh, so when we are entering the, the plastic region, we are somewhere around here that we begin with plastic region. Before that, we just have an, a, a spring-like behavior. And after that, the plastic deformation starts. And from this point, we will have two uh, mechanisms responsible for plastic deformation or for permanent deformation. So as soon as we enter the plastic deformation, we will have two mechanisms uh, uh, kind of uh, playing a role in a permanent deformation. One mechanism is what we call slip, that is referred to the image. So slip, as the image also shows, is the sliding of atomic planes on top of each other when uh, uh, you're applying a mechanical force. And we are, as I said, in plastic region. So the elastic, we applied enough force to pass the elastic region and now we are in plastic region and one mechanism that could happen is slip which is sliding of these atomic planes on top of each other which accommodates for plastic deformation second mechanism is twinning and exactly like these twins in this picture we also in our material we have one side of uh, the material like this side as a mirror image of the other side of the material, which is this side. So if you look at these two sides, if you look at these two sides, one is this side and the other is this side, and they are separated by this boundary, if you can see, right? And above and below this boundary, the, the atomic planes are a mirror image of each other. So they are making a twin on top and on the bottom with the boundary in between, right? So that's the boundary. That's the boundary that they have, which we call twin bond boundary. And above the twin boundary and below the twin boundary, you have mirror image of these atomic planes that we call this effect, this phenomenon as it's happening, we call it twinning. And in this image, for example, the, the direction that we are applying force is in this direction and twinning is happening. So when we are applying force in this direction and we are in plastic region, two things could happen. First is slip, that is sliding the atomic planes on top of each other. And the second is twinning, which is the material rearrange itself so that some parts will be mirrored, mirror image on the, other, uh, on the other side with the boundary in between, which we call twin boundary. So two main mechanisms. <clears throat> If I put them side by side, slip and twinning, now you can have a look and compare how the material rearranges itself and moves uh, by the, these two mechanisms, by twinning and slip. And if you pay attention, you see that slip is much more uh, um, enhanced in terms of movements of uh, uh, atoms with respect to twinning. So, a slip requires movement and mobility of complete dislocations for slip to happen. But twinning requires movement of maybe partial dislocations and it's a rearrangement of the atomic structure. So slip is more enhanced in terms of, um, uh, in terms of deformation and requires the movement of 
dislocations. If you don't know what dislocations are, again, check here or here. Uh, there's a video uh, uh, titled Plastic Deformation, and there we will talk about dislocations. But uh, briefly, just to bring it here, dislocations are extra half planes within the atomic, just to recap, within the atomic planes, it's an extra half plane that is responsible for plastic deformation, and these dislocations move. Uh, when the when we have plastic deformation. So for slip, these dislocations, these extra half planes begin to move, and then you have slip that is sliding these atomic planes over each other. For twinning, you don't require the movement of complete movement of these dislocations. Even a partial movement can accommodate for twinning. So, so for plastic deformation, we have these two mechanisms. So now the question is, which one will happen first? Can we have them both? The question, uh, the answer is, uh, slip is generally preferred over the two, uh, these two mechanisms. So most likely, when atoms are going to, when metals are going through plastic deformation, uh, slip is preferred uh, as a mechanism of plastic deformation. And if slip cannot happen, then twinning could happen. But there are, there are many cases then that slip and twinning as a mechanism for plastic deformation happen at the same time. And it's, uh, it depends on also the crystal structure and the type of unit cells and the arrangement of the atoms that we are having. How would that affect that? So if you look at the unit cells, if you don't know what unit cells are, check here again. Or here, but if you if you look at the unit cells, we have different arrangement of atoms into unit cells for crystalline materials. And this unit cells, the the type that the arrangement that we are having would affect the twinning and slip. In what way? Well, slip happens in certain uh, planes and directions of atoms. So uh, that we call closed pack direction and and closed pack planes. Slip happens preferably over those closed pack planes and along closed pack directions, okay? So as mechanical engineers, this is, this is the layer that we need to know. If you're a material engineer, you need to dig in deeper, but for mechanical engineer, that should be enough. That uh, for slip, which requires movement of dislocations, we need certain planes and directions and it, uh, with respect to the type of the unit cell that you have, if it's BCC or FCC, this slip systems, slip planes and directions are different in terms of number and also capacity. Okay, so for example, for an FCC, the direction of slip along a closed pack direction would be in this direction, Right? That could be a closed pack direction. And this plane that is accommodating uh, the, the direction, the arrow. So that plane and that direction is a system of a, of a plane and also a direction which we call closed pack. They are really closed pack with respect to atoms that are, uh, that are next to each other. This is the closed pack plane and closely packed direction. But we need to know that. But depending on the type of unit cell that you have, they could be different. For example, for FCC, they are 12. For BCC, they could be somewhere from 12 to 48, depending on the temperature and type of stresses that are applied. But the more we have, that's the point, the more we have of these uh, available slip systems, the easier it is for our material to go through the slipway as a mechanism for plastic deformation. So if you have more available slip systems, which are like close packed planes and directions, it means that slip is probably more favored when you compare it to 20, okay? Now we have another crystal structure that we, that we discussed also last time, and that's HCP. It's an, it's an hexagonal type unit cell. It's still a unit cell. Um, which has only three available slip systems, like a closely packed plane and a closely packed direction uh, uh, on the same plane. It only has three. 
Examples of HCP materials are magnesium and titanium. So when it has only three, and when you compare to FCC and BCC, which have at least 12, it means that in HCP materials like magnesium and titanium, because we have limited slip systems, the twinning most of the time is preferred. So when you are dealing with the mechanical behavior of materials, especially for HCP materials, when you are deforming them and applying mechanical strain on them, you expect twinning to happen because they have limited slip systems. Therefore, twinning is preferred. But it doesn't mean that when twinning happens, slip cannot happen. They can uh, happen at the same time. Even a movement and mobility of, of some of these twins can activate uh, dislocations or, or generate dislocations as, as, as we are applying strain. But in short, uh, the more available slip systems that you have, the more slip is favored over the twinning. And you, if you have limited amount of them, then twinning is preferred. And twinning is a mirror image of your crystal when it's happening. It requires less movement and displacement of atoms. And slip is, of course, it's sliding uh, of uh, the atomic plane over each other, which requires more movement of these atoms and the, and the these atomic planes and full mobility of uh, dislocations along uh, the crystal of the material. That concludes the differences between slip and twinning. I hope you learned it. I'll see you.